Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, webinar. We will discuss a little bit about uh, top-down design. So just quickly, the webinar agenda. So I think guys already received this um, when you um, signed up for the webinar. So I'm just going to do a quick introduction about uh, boundary systems. And uh, then uh, we'll, I prepared a few slides on top down and design. And then we're going to jump into Creo and I'll do a short demonstration on how to use some of these tools that's available. And after that, we'll do a, a question and answer session. So if you think about any questions, um, there's a there's some um, using the the, um, the webinar pane, there's a section where you can add those questions and um, I'll answer them after the demonstration. So just uh, quickly, something about myself. So I'm Pierre Fenter, so I'm a Boundary um, Systems um, Technical Specialist. Been using uh, Creo um, or uh, PTC products for about nine years now. So I've been, been through um, a few phases with PTC. Something about boundary systems. So here are some of the logos of the customers that we serve. Um, we normally help these customers with um, things like product lifecycle management, um, data management solutions, CAD design and consulting, um, simulation, and then product development as well. So some of our, our major accreditations, I think the important ones here are the um, PTC stuff. So we are Winchell certified implementers. Uh, we're also a preferred service provider for PTC and also a certified training partner for PTC. And then some of the other uh, solutions we offer, I think PTC is the bulk of everything, but then we do some solid thinking, H and ZWCAD stuff as well. Okay, so um, I think I, I prepared about five or six slides on the top-down design. So um, I think this um, this webinar will be uh, available afterwards as, as well. So um, if you need to get back to any of these, it will be available. Okay, so what is top um, top-down design? So it's just a method of of um, designing um, large assemblies a certain way. Um, you can read through through that, but I think the most important thing that you have to do is you have you have to plan these assemblies. Okay, so um, I've I've talked to a lot of customers previously, and they would start off with a, a with a certain product. Um, they will um, structure the assemblies a certain way, and then they want to go and um, implement top down design. Okay, so. That normally is not a good idea. Um, you, it, it can be done. Um, it's difficult. You've, you've designed your components already a certain way. So um, my recommendation would be take a new product or a product that, that you want to redo um, and then start using a, a top-down design um, methodology. Right. So, um, and then, then, as soon as you start planning, then you can structure your assemblies and um, then you can start using these tools that's that's available in Creo. But they, they're only tools. You you still need to use them the right way. Okay, so um, I guess the, my plan for today is to um, introduce you to some of those tools. Um, I haven't picked all of them um, that's available, but I've, I think I've picked the, um, the most important one, uh, ones that will make your life a lot easier when you start with these um, top-down design um, products. Okay. So if you remember anything from this slide, just remember, plan your stuff, then it's gonna be a lot easier. Okay, so these are the tools that I've um, sort of handpicked. Um, I think skeleton models are the most important one as soon as you start using top-down design. Um, shrink wraps, um, that's that's a tool that's there to make your life a lot easier when you start working with um, large assemblies. Um, and then we're going to work with um, some of the data sharing tools. So the ones that I've picked over there is the publishing geometry. 
and then the merge and inheritance features as well. So um, I guess I've, I've used the merge and inheritance features just to um, show you there's there's a lot of there's a, there's some tools that's a lot easier than using your normal reference and extrudes and things like that to get information from other models or other parts. Okay, so let's let's discuss um, skeleton models. Okay, so so when you use a skeleton model, you set the design and motion intent at the beginning of design process for part or assemblies. Okay, so these skeleton models will basically um, shape your whole assembly. Um, it's it's going to create the, um, the the design framework for you. Um, you're going to use it um, as a common um, reference, so you can create um, um, datum planes, datum points, surfaces, extrudes, things like that. You can create all of those things in this skeleton model. Okay. So, so from uh, from there, if you change the skeleton model, um, and then everything that's linked to that um, will update as well. So I think these two pictures on the right hand side is a, is a perfect example of all of that. So when you use um, your bottom up approach, or when you just um, jump into a new product and you start um, designing this assembly, then then you get those cross references, and at some stage. Um, uh, you're changing a certain part and then something else updates and this and that. And if you start working with um, um, a large amount of sub-assemblies, then, then it becomes a little bit of a nightmare to control that. So it's fine for, for, um, for the first round, but as soon as you're making changes, then it becomes a problem. So with skeleton models, all of that is, um, is going away because you reference everything to the skeleton model. As soon as you change that, um, all the other things will update as well. Okay, so just um, some properties um, of the skeleton model. You'll see it will always jump to the top of your model tree or the sub-assembly where you've um, added it. Um, there's no mass prop and it's in a bluish color by default. Okay. And then, like I've said, you add datum features, sketches and surface, things like that into that skeleton model. Okay, so as soon as we jump into Creo, I'll show you how a um, skeleton model will, will react and how they normally look. Then, the second tool that I wanted to discuss is the shrink wrap. So, a shrink wrap feature is a collection of surfaces and datums that present the exterior shape of a model. Okay, so you can use a part, skeleton, or top level assembly as the source for a shrink wrap feature. Okay, so this is a handy tool um, when you're working in a large assembly and um, your machine is too slow and you need to free up a, um, some resources, um, then shrink wrap tools are great to use. Okay, so it's going to lighten up your, your assembly um, a little bit. If you take a, um, a car or, um, or the train that we'll be using on today, um, those um, those engines um, normally have a few parts in them, like pistons and things and like that. You don't need that information. Okay, so maybe that, that's not a great example. Most of the um, engines that you import these days into CAD models is, is, is only the, the outer shape. But, but you, can, um, you can create a complex assembly or part um, and you can just make it a lot easier on, the, on, the, on your machine to use. Um, that will save you some regeneration times and things like that as well. Right? So make the load as easy as possible with these sh um, shrink wrap features and models. And then the next one, um, the data sharing. So we're going to talk about um, copy and publish geometry features. So copy and publish geometry features are top-down design tools to associatively to communicate design criteria. Okay, so um, in the example that, that we'll use today, we're gonna, um, we, we'll be working in a train model and we're gonna take um, information from one skeleton model and we're gonna put it in another skeleton model using this um, uh, copy and publish geometry tools. So 
I'll show you how that used, but it's a it's it's the perfect way to get information from one level or from one assembly to another assembly and keeping the link between them. Okay. Then um, the second one on this is the merge and inheritance features. So this is a little bit uh, more on, on part level. So uh, when you when you want to subtract or add um, components to each other, you'll use the, uh, the merge tool. The inheritance feature tool is, um, is a one-way associative tool um, where you can um, create certain variants of a specific product. Right. So I think it's quite easy. Merge, you're going to add or remove material, like the example we have there on the right-hand side, um, a linear bearing there. And then the inheritance tools, uh, we, we want to change some of the variants um, for testing purposes, something like that. Um, and you're not changing the original design, uh, or it's still driven from the original design. Okay, then my contact information. So um, you can take a snapshot of that if you want to. I'm going to put it up when we do the question and answer session as well. Uh, so you can um, send me a mail if you have any questions. Um, if I can't answer your question um, during this webinar, drop me a mail and I'll um, send you um, an answer or I will get the, the answer from somebody at BTC or um, somebody in our team should be able to help at least. And then any sales questions, you can just send those mails off to sales um, at Boundary Systems as well. Okay, so let's jump into CREA and let's just talk a little bit about, more about um, these tools that I've discussed now during the slides. Okay, so we'll be using this, this train model um, and let's just quickly go down the, the model tree and see what, what's here. So you can see we have a top level assembly, um, we've got the locomotive skeleton and then we've got the main frame. So you can see, and as I go down these, you can see there's various levels on these. Okay, so the idea is to have a nice short um, model tree most of the time. So you can see top level, quite compact, and we're going to um, work with this one from there. So the section that we'll be working on is this first um, passenger car um, over here, and we need to add um, some structure elements. So we're going to add the, um, the window, and then we also need to uh, specify some information for the interior designer of this passenger. So seat heights, um, things like that. Um, so we're in that role now and we're going to give those guys the correct information. From there, they can go and they can design within this, um, within this space that we've created. Okay, so, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on that skeleton model. So we'll, we'll use the published geometry tool first. So um, this is where you, uh, where you take information from a skeleton and you publish that, you tell the guys, okay, so this is information, um, you can use that, you can bring that into another skeleton model and from there you can um, design according to that. So if I go into a, a higher level of this assembly and I change that, all the sub-assemblies and things that's, that's grabbing that information is going to update and change according to that. Okay, so it sounds easy. Um, it should be easy, but there's a lot of people and there's a lot of planning always involved in this. Okay, so um, I've seen customers that will have a, um, like an like a office document about a product um, and the, those things get noted in there. Okay, so um, do what you have to do to make it as easy as possible for your designers um, to go and investigate or, or, or get the right information. Um, Creo is only a part of that. Um, as soon as you go into wind chill and data management solutions, um, then, then you need to plan accordingly as well. 
Okay, so, so the first thing that, that we're going to do is we're going to add um, some information to our top level skeleton here. So I'm just going to activate that. And you can see we're in normal um, part mode. And what, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this surface and I'm going to publish that to um, tell the interior designer where the surface or where the, uh, where the floor of this passenger car is. So I'm going to start the publishing geometry tool. And it's going to allow me to grab certain surface sets. Okay, so first thing that I want to grab, I'm just going to pick from list. And I'm going to grab that surface over there. Right, so you, you don't have to use the pick from list. You can go all control down and you can select all the surfaces that you want to select. Um, then the, another thing that I want to select is this chain over there and then maybe the, the window height as well. So I know this guy's going to design a seat, for instance, uh, so he needs to go and do that. Okay, then when you create these published geometries, give them a proper name. Um, naming is important. This is for the structure maybe, or it's for the, um, for the seat or, or whatever. Give them a nice descriptive name. It's such a simple thing, but it makes such a big difference. Okay, so um, just get that in there. Um, so seat and window, whatever, or interior, let's call it interior. Okay, and I'm going to finish that. So you'll notice in my model tree, they created that published geometry. Okay, so let's do another one. So published geometry, we select the surface that we want. So let's say, um, we need to make some changes to the structure. So we'll need that surface over there. We'll need that surface. We might need this chain over here. We'll need the window height. Uh, we might need the, the door height as well. And then that should be able to help us with that. We might grab the last window as well. Okay. So all of that is going to be the structure. Okay, finish that. And I can see the structure published geometry is also there. Okay, so now you can send that guy a mail and tell him, listen, um, I've added the, the published geometry information that you needed to uh, go design the seat or make the window frames or whatever the case might be. Okay, so. From there, he can go open up the, the assembly that he needs to work on. So let's call it structure over here. And he's got a skeleton as well. Okay, so what I like about this method is that every sub-assembly has got a, um, um, a skeleton model to that. So you don't have to take information down to part level. You can keep it in that sub-assembly structure where where everything is um, grouped nicely together. Okay, so this is an ideal situation. Um, I know in the office it doesn't always work like that, but try to get to this where you have um, skeleton models in, different, in every sub-assembly and then information gets published to that and you can use it from there and that's going to drive that sub-assembly again. Okay. Again, that's um, that's up to your planning and how you want to um, drive that information. Okay, so well, what I'll be doing is I'm going to take that information, put it in my structure um, skeleton, and from there I would design a part from that. Okay, so it will look at my uh, at my subassembly structure first, and then it will go look at the at the higher level. Right, so you, you you can break it down like that. So I'm just going to activate that one. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to arrange my model tree a little bit better. So I'm in the structure skeleton. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll say, oh, sorry, I'm going to get 
that information. So I'm going to copy geometry and I'm going to get it within this assembly. Okay, so, so I can set an external component as well. So, the, so this is now where you, where you have maybe a released um, part or a, um, a, a released product um, and you want to reuse information from that. You can do that. So you don't need everything in one assembly to use this method. Um, just for this example, everything is within one product. Um, so you can go and I can go browse and I can pick any other component that's that's available on my system or in Winchell or whatever the case might be. And I can grab published geometry from that. But again, that's that's planning that needs to happen up front. Where is the information coming from and where are we going to use that? Okay, so in this case, everything is nice and easy. We're going to do it um, from the same assembly. So, so just a, a warning message that I've changed that. So, well, that's fine. And then it's asking me what published geometry what do I want to use in this assembly? So you can go and you can pick anything. Um, if there's um, other sub-assemblies with um, published geometry, I can go and I can grab that, that information if I need to. Uh, for this example, I'm going to grab the structure information. You can see it highlights over here. And I'm going to say, well, that's what I want. If you go to the options tab, very important here is um, how do you want this to update? Okay, so, <clears throat> so once again, this will be um, it, it needs to be a decision within um, the, the team that's working with a specific product. Um, because do you want it to update when you make the changes? Do you want to go and force it? Do you want to break the dependencies and things like that? Um, that's, that's all options that, um, that this tool will give you. You need to decide how do you want to drive that. Okay. So in this case, we're going to use it, um, the automatic update. And as soon as we make a change to the highest level, that will filter down to the lower levels. So great. Okay, so that is in there now. So you can see the copy geometry. And I just said you should rename your stuff. So always go and rename or give it a nice descriptive name. Okay, to do that. So this was for the structure. Ooh. Okay, so you know where that is coming from. Okay, so simple thing, um, easy to do, and you'll use the you'll use the same method for the um, for the interior that I've created. I just quickly want to go into this structured assembly. I'm just going to open this up. And you can see in my skeleton that that information that I've copied is in here now. Okay, so now I can go and I can use that assembly. I can use that. I can create a sweep with a cut um, and I can use my normal path design um, tools, but all referencing to that skeleton and uh, within my structured um, assembly. Okay, so quite easy. Create the information that you need. In this case, it was already created, the curves and the surfaces. Um, I just reuse that um, in the skeleton. I made that available. Um, and then I used um, the copy geometry tool to pull that down to lower levels. Okay, so I think that's that's what I wanted to do to show on skeleton models. Let's quickly go to um, some of the other tools. Um, I just quickly need to open up another assembly here. Yeah? And that was the engine for the shrink wrap feature that I wanted to use. Okay, so we've got a, 
a fairly simple assembly over here, but we've got a, a few components inside the assembly. There's bearings, uh, there's a block uh, bearing inside the cylinder, the bolts, things like that. There's a crank inside, piston inside. So uh, very nice. Um, um, everything is in there. Um, but try to imagine a component within within your design team where you just need the, the, the outer bit for um, a specific um, design scenario. Okay. That's where you will use these shrink wraps. Okay. So I'm going to use it in, a, um, in the same assembly first. Um, so you're going to start the shrink wrap tool. And then from there, you, you've got a few options. So um, do you want to grab information in here? You can use the subset and you can just grab whatever you need in here. Okay. So do you want certain things ignored? You just select them, right click and say ignore. That's not going to be part of your shrink wrap. I'm just going to cancel that. Um, if we go to the references, um, you can auto collect all solid surfaces. So that's going to exclude the internal stuff. So that's that's certain scenarios that you can choose. Let's put that back to just the outer shell, or you can do manual collection and you can just select your surfaces um, that you want to see um, when you do the design. Okay. So I think the important thing on on, on shrink wraps is that um, don't use them for referencing purposes. Use them only for visual things. Make your assembly lighter. Um, make it easier to regenerate your assemblies. Uh, things like that. Okay. So when you need to reference things and you need to make changes to that, then the, skele then the skeleton models with the published geometry is the right tool to use. Okay, so let's just quickly go through the options that we'll have. Um, I'm going to go to outer shell option again. Um, and you have a level. Um, this level is going to give you a, a warning that the higher the level, the more resources it will take um, to go and generate that, that, um, that shrink wrap part. Okay, so let's leave it at um, level one for now. And let's see. Sure, automatic update. Okay, so once again, we've got the, the update features. So if you make a change to this, should the shrink wrap um, thing update automatically? Or do you want to do it manually? Um, or do you want to break all the dependencies? Right. So you you decide what you what you need there. For my example now, I'm going to leave it on automatic update. Okay, so Let's see how that was created. Let's quickly hide these bits. And you can see that's a that's a level one shrink wrap. Okay. So if I needed just this interface or um, just the, the holes, then yeah, it might be sufficient. Um, let's do a, a level 10 and you'll notice just the regeneration time. Okay, um, let's redo that. So let's delete that. In the parts again, create that shrink wrap feature. I'm going to grab the outer shell and we want to just increase this. So you'll notice that it's running a, through a few stages now. So there's not many components in here. Obviously, you, you have to judge that on the complexity of, of your parts and your assembly. Um, then again, you'll do this once and you have the information that you need. Okay, so, so maybe go through that once then you have everything and you are set. Yeah. 
think the I should have just uh, solidified everything. That would make it a little bit easier. But if we do the same thing now, we hide all of this, and you can see that shrink wrap is basically a copy and paste from my part or the assembly. Okay, so just judge that, um, use it where you need to, and make your life a little bit easier viewing your components. Okay, then I want to quickly discuss two tools, um, the merge tool, and it's a fairly simple example, but we're going to use the, um, the remove functionality on this. Um, so we will, we've, we've got a, um, a seat belt clip over here, and we've got our plastic bit, but our plastic bit is still solid. So if you don't use the merge inheritance um, tool, you can go and you can grab all those surfaces. Um, you can do a sketch and you um, can use the edges as references and you can get to the same result. But I'm going to do that as well. And I'm going to show you the difference in the model tree and the difference in the reference viewer. All right, so let's do that first. So let's do the, um, the remove one first. So you're going to take the part where you want to apply the change and activate that, and you're going to use the Merge Inheritance tool. Okay, so in this case, once again, you can go and you can grab um, information, um, external information, and it's going to keep that link um, to that component. So now I can go, I can browse, and I can pick a different component in WinChill or Data Management System, or I can um, browse to a library or item, things like that. You can go and grab that as well. Um, in this case, I don't want to do that. I'm just quickly going to restart that. And I'm going to select the component. So I'm going to use this latch. That's so going to grab that latch. And once again, very important. Um, you've got the, the option on how to uh, manage your, um, your ge geometry updates. If you use the, the other method that I'm going to show now, where you pick the edges and things like that, you don't have an option. If you change something, it's going to filter through. It's either going to um, fail or it's going to make the change and you don't have control over that. Yeah, at least you have a little bit of control. Yeah, so in this case, I'm going to leave mine as automatic again. I'm going to tell it to remove material, and I'm going to say OK. And that's done. So if we open up this now, you can see my cutout feature is there. Before the cutout feature, we had a solid. That's there now. And let's quickly do a cross section here. So you can see that. Okay, very nice. Okay, so let's let's use the other method. Let's delete this, the merge tool that we've used. Right, delete. And let's go back to our assembly. No, that's not that one. Uh, seatbelt assembly. And let's use this a uh, different way. So once again, we're going to activate our component, the plastic part that we want to cut. And now I'm going to create um, an extrude. And I'm going to say, well, I'm going to use the top plane. So I'm being nice. I'm using the, the, the plane within that component. I could have used the assembly top plane or things like that. And I'm going to grab the, the edges on this metal piece. So that's the first one that I want. I'm going to grab the outside as well. And then I'm going to say OK. And then that's fine. I can do the extrude now. So for my extrude, I'm going to use the references again. So I'm going to say to select it to the top of that component. And then I'm going to say for the second direction, I want the bottom half. And that's going to create my extrude. I cut out. 
Okay, so you'll notice if I open up this component again, oh, I should have removed material over here. Sorry about that. Remove material. Okay, so you'll notice now that this component, it looks identical. It's, it's exactly the same thing. Um, I used an extrude and I've got the same result. So the biggest difference over here is now I've got an extrude 2 in there. So if somebody else is working on this component, um, it will just see it as a normal extrude. But if you go and you say reference viewer in here, then you're going to see, OK, but this extrude um, was from a different component. The round is from a different component. Um, OK, at least I used the extrude and things like that. But now you're sitting with external references over here. And the guy working with this component don't realize that. So what will he do? He will say, well, this is great. I can reuse this somewhere else. Copy and paste this or save a, um, save a copy of this. And that information gets tagged along. Um, and then that's just a snowball effect where if you used the, the first method, let's delete this one again. So quick to re redo it. If you use the first method, activate the component, merge inheritance. I'm going to use that component. I'm going to remove material. There's a cut on ID over here. So you can see immediately it's different in the part. Um, you can go and open that up. And if you reference viewer this, it will tell you if I used the latch part for that. Okay, so yes, it's the same thing. It's a different method. I like this way. It, there's something in the model tree that's different from your normal extrudes, revolves, and bits and pieces. Okay, so that's the merge tool. So a little bit. Um, further down in the process, we start actually um, designing your components. The last one that I want to show is the inheritance feature. And um, you'll use the, the same, the same um, tool. Uh, so let's use that. I'm going to browse for a component and I just quickly need to get into the rec folder. And I'm going to use this sprocket. So re re remember the rule on the, in, on the inheritance feature. It's going to take um, a component or information. It's going to add it to a, a, another component. Um, but then it's only one way. So I can't drive another component with this specific feature. I can only change what's already there. So in this case, I don't want to change the, the original part but I want to test it in this scenario. So what I'll do is I'll line that up. So, okay, let's quickly view that. Yeah, that's where I want it. And then when I change it to inheritance, there's an option available for varied items. Okay, so remember you have to say inheritance, otherwise it's just gonna be a normal uh, merge operation. So I want to use inheritance, I want a varied item, and I'm going to pick this extrude over there, and I'm saying, well, I'm going to test it here. Um, I want to make this thicker. I'm going to change that from eight milli excuse me, eight millimeters to twelve millimeters. And I'm going to say, Ooh. I think I've changed the wrong. Oh no, it's fine. Just a little bit of a preview we showed there. But okay, so now you can see that one's a lot thicker than the original one. So if I go and I open up my sprocket, nothing has changed over here. That dimension is still eight. Okay, but now I've combined those components and I've tasted it with a new 
um, scenario, made it a little bit thicker, and it's also telling me in the model tree that this is an external inheritance, and that's the original part that I've used. Okay. Again, go and rename those properties, give them a nice descriptive name. Okay, so I think that's the that's the basic tools that I, that I wanted to discuss today. There's really a lot more um, to top down design. Um, so I think those those are the ones that um, stood out for me. Um, if you if you use them a lot, you use them properly. Um, it's already going to be a lot easier for you to go and manage these top down designs. I'm going to mute myself for a minute or so. Um, if you have any questions, get those questions in and I'll try to answer them now. Um, if not, um, I'll get somebody to help me on that and I'll reach out to you by email. So let me get my contact information up again. Oops. Okay, so I'll give you about two, three minutes, then um, I'll answer those questions. Okay, so there's um, a few questions coming in. So let's start with the first one. Um, okay, so the first one was what version of Creo I was using in the demonstration. Um, I used Creo 6.0. Then um, the second question, is there a limit to the number of dimensions you can modify in the inheritance features? Um, I don't think there's a limit but uh, try to keep it um, to a specific scenario. Remember, there's, there's other tools in Creo as well that you can use, um, family table components, where you can drive it a little bit, um, um, and you can um, add relations and things like that. So, um, yes, there's a lot you can add in there, but manage it, um, don't overdo it. There's other tools that can make your life a lot easier. Yeah, then there was a question about the student version for Creo. Um, there's a specific license um, that you that you need for the student version as well. There's um, different versions of that. There's a trial version, then a student version, and then there's university um, one as well. So I guess the best way would be to contact the sales team 
um, they should point you in the right direction or you can download a certain version from uh, ptc.com as well. Okay, so for student version, get, get involved with the sales team um, or PTC. And then, then there's a question to, um, and I guess the question is, can I make the, the models available? Um, unfortunately, I can't. Um, it's PTC product. It's a PTC demo that I've used. Um, some of the information is available on training um, or was um, in certain training available. Um, so, I guess technically my answer is no, I can't make it available. Um, but then again, um, a lot of this information um, that I've showed today is available in the help files. Uh, so if you're going to Creo and you open up the help files um, and you're looking under assemblies, there's a top down design section, you can use that. And then the presentation will be available on YouTube. Um, normally take a, a, a few days after today. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll guess they'll, they'll go out. Uh, they'll, there'll be a, um, an email going out that it is available. We'll just go to YouTube and follow Boundary Systems and you will get notified as soon as we load up something new there. Okay, so I don't see any um, any new questions coming in. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today. And um, there's, there's a few other webinars coming down each week. So make sure to join us then as well. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll, um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Yeah, thank you everybody. Have a good day, bye.